So smooth quant makes the weight and activation into 8 bit, right? By smoothing the activations, pushing the quantization difficulty from the activation to the weight, um, improving the uh, throughput, uh, improving the throughput for large language model. What about the batch size is small, okay? In the edge scenario or real time interaction, like you want to talk to a robot, one-to-one um, -one conversation. When the batch size is small, we observe uh, this is the uh, real flying model. Okay, the x-axis is the compute intensity. The y-axis is the measured uh, t-ops per second. When the batch size is one, there is actually a pretty low utilization. This is your peak, peak um, t-ops per second. This is the measured t-ops per second. It's very well underutilized. It's highly because it's highly memory bounded, right? Uh, because large language models are pretty big. Like Lama 2 7B has 7 billion parameters. If you're using FP16, how many storage do you need? That's 14 gigabytes, right? 14 gigabytes, that's pretty big. You have to fetch 14 gigabytes in the auto regressive manner, which means generating each token requires 14 gigabytes of memory access. Remember, computation is cheap, memory is expensive. We have to, we want to reduce those memory footprint. And compared with the activate uh, the weight, the activation is actually small, right? So the weight is like 4K by 4K, um, but the activation, if it's single batch, is like one by 4K. It's a thousand times smaller. Therefore, we should focus on compressing the weight. So that's why we introduce uh, this low bit weight only quantization. We are also going to see that in the homework. So that's why we need such uh, weight only quantization to reduce the memory bandwidth. Uh, previously, we have to fetch uh, 14 gigabytes of memory. What about if we quantize the weight to 4 bit for Lama 7B? What is the memory footprint now? Three and a half, right? Three and a half gigabyte, four times smaller. So this is naively doing that from uh, this is a weight matrix. So in the, using the FP16 representation, the four eight by four matrix. This is the quantized version. It's again eight by four, but it's quantized uh, using um, three bit in this case. Easy uh, to to show it, but immediately we see. Is perplexity degradation. The lower the perplexity, the better the quality. But here, unfortunately, <coughs> there's a huge jump um, of the perplexity if we naively quantize it. Perplexity is a measurement of the quality of a language model. It's showing the, uh, the accuracy of predicting the next word, whether you are accurately predicting the next word or not. So the lower, the better. So unfortunately, directly doing Round to nearest quantization using 3 bit hurt the accuracy a lot. Uh, even if we're using this uh, group wise quantization, so here every um, 128 numbers are quantized together, and we have a shared scaling factor, a finer granularity of shared uh, scaling factor every uh, 128 elements, which we covered in the second lecture of the quantization part. Interestingly, we find not all the weights are equally important. Just by quantizing 1%, um, keep 1% of the rows in FP16 can help a lot immediately bring back the perplexity for the original value. This is so amazing. We seem to find a way to quantize that, right? Only keep 1% into FP16. Um, like here, only one channel, keep it as uh, the same as before, just don't quantize it, and immediately bring back uh, the perplexity, the quality, okay? So therefore, we have two natural uh, to-dos. One to-do is to think about how do we choose those um, saving channels, which channel is important. There exists, so the channel is only 1% of the channel, but how do we systematically select those 1% of the channels? And second to do is, 
keeping IP16 will make the inference kernel difficult. How do we get rid of this mixed precision and still use full quantization? Everything will be in blue rather than having 1% in, in yellow. So let's answer those two questions. When we are doing pruning, how do we select these important weights? Which one to prune, which one to remove? We look at the weight itself, right? If it is large, we think, oh, that's an important weight, important channel, we should keep it. What if we do it here? We look at the weight. If it is large, we just remove, or keep it, otherwise we remove it. Unfortunately, the price is pretty high. And we did another way. Don't look at the weight. Since weight is multiplied with the activation, let's just look at those activations. Since during smooth quant, we find some activations are pretty huge. We want to preserve those outlier channels. So say this is the outlier channel. This is a pretty big activation channel. And that is consistent for different inputs, different tokens. They're all big channels. And then if this channel is big in the activation, this corresponding weight is considered salient or important. We should keep them. So using this way, the activation, not the weight. That's why we call it activation aware weight only quantization. We are quantizing the weight, but you look at activation to, to determine which weight is salient. By looking at the activations uh, magnitude, it's easier. Um, to recover the perplexity. So we solve the first to do a look at the activation, not the weight, to determine those 1% saving channel. Then we have the second to do, right? Um, can we re uh, don't, not rely on this mixed precision, still use all FP, sorry, all int 4 or all int 3 to get rid of this mixed precision? We tried a very simple technique. We just multiply uh, this weight channel by two and divide the activation channel by two. So they are mathematically equal, like smooth quant. Um, so by multiplying it from like 1.5, 2, and 4, we find um, this is a very effective way to recover the perplexity without introducing um, this FP16, 1% of channels in FP16, just multiply that salient channel by a number larger than 1 and bring back um, this perplexity. This is so amazing. Previously, we have to rely on 1% rely on of the channels being, quant uh, being unquantized in FP16, making the kernel difficult to write. But now, just multiply the salient channel by a larger number and it will recover. Another but another problem came. How, we, how large should we multiply that channel? Like here, you first see um, the perplexity decrease and then increase. So there must be a sweet spot where we want to automatically search um, uh, the multiplier. So let's see, analyze first. Why enlarging the channel make it easier to recover the perplexity? So this layer is not denoted by weight times the activation. And then we care about the quantization error from the quantized version of the W times X, okay? Um, so QW, quantized version of W, basically equal to, uh, we, uh, this is defining the, the range, okay? We divided the range by the number of centroids. Since you have N bits, they are to the power of N minus one, um, centroids. And this is the distance between each centroid. And then we um, give W divided by this number and multiply this number to the in the outside. And we have to round it uh, to the nearest integer. So that's the quantized version of W. If we, what if we scale that? Like here, we scale it by like 1.5, by 2. For those salient weight, what happened to that? So we scale up the weight, and we have to scale down the activation. Okay? So previously it's Q, um, um, QW times X, now it's QW times S. 
uh, times x divided by s. So there are still mathematically equal s gets cancelled here. If we plug in ws into the uh, representation for the q, uh, we can see sw is here. Since w becomes sw, and x divided by s is here. What happened here is that the rounding function always has an expect, expectation of 0 0.25. Since rounding is always, the rounding error ranges from 0 to 0 0.5, right? Like 1.5 get rounded to 2, 1.75 get rounded to 2 as well. The average is 0 and 2.5, it's a quarter, which is between 0 and 0 0.5. So this doesn't change. Um, what about this delta? Okay, so this delta is only dependent, is only dependent on the maximum of the weight. So there are a group of weights in the vertical dimension. Um, and the group size is 128. Uh, just scale up one channel, it's very unlikely to change the max value. Unless one in 125, 128, you hit that max value. Otherwise, you are not going to change it. So this, w, uh, this delta is not going to change. But only this s is something, s is larger than 1, so this error is scaled down. Okay? So when the s is greater than 1, the error is scaled down. That's why scaling up, scaling up the salient channel can achieve the same effect of making that channel to be MP16. Before the quantization, so it's easier to quantize. Okay, so we scaled it up, and then the equation is very similar to smooth plan, make it easy uh, to in, uh, for industry to put into products. Right, same infrastructure you can do either smooth quant or AWQ. So here we times uh, W times S, X divided by S. This can be fused to the previous operation or fused into the layer norm. And then we take a data-driven approach to do a, a fast grade search to search the uh, best scaling factor, which is greater than one. And later follow-up work even propose a learning-based method to use gradient descent to learn the best scaling factor. So this is three bit. Uh, group size 128, and LAMA, uh, and also LAMA2, uh, AWQ shows consistent better performance compared with round to nearest, or GPTQ or GPTQR, um, like 7B all the way to 30B models. It also work, out, work well for multi-model large language model, which we are going to introduce in the next lecture on vision transformers. So this is Flamingo for image captioning. Um, this is comparison with different baselines, actually pretty significant improvement about the uh, accuracy here. Given this image, the round to nearest baseline quantization model says, a model airplane is flying in the sky. AWQ can say two toy airplanes sitting on a grass field. This one baseline model is saying a man is holding a baby elephant in his arm, versus AWQ says a man and his daughter pose with an elephant. Uh, the last one, a man and a dog walking past some bushes versus AWQ, two dogs are walking on the street. You can even um, use lava, quantize lava to do visual reasoning. Like given this, uh, there is some caption here, but this is all represented in the image format, although it has some text. You have to automatically to do OCR to understand it. Some chicken, like a world map. Uh, the baseline quantization RTA model says there are small pictures of the Earth and other planets placed on top of the food, versus AWQ says a lighthearted and humorous take on the concept of looking at the pieces of the Earth from space. A uh, plate of fried food, especially chicken nuggets, is presented with the caption, and the caption is actually exactly the same as the caption here. So it means uh, this vision language model is automatically doing the OCR to understand uh, the text here. Uh, one more example, it's able to recognize this 
who is painting who painted this Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, so uh, smooth quantum AWQ are widely used these days. That's why we also put it in the homework uh, in the lab four, which we released last week. Uh, we give you the code, and also it will pave the way for lab five, which we are going to actually implement that on the laptop. Um, NVIDIA Faster Transformer and Tensor RTLM. This is the library run. Uh, large language model inference, which is actually a pretty amazing library released actually last week. How amazing, how timely we are. Um, the Tensor RTLM, the uh, the, uh, they are using the smooth quant um, and AWQ as their quantization approaches. Also, Intel will chain Berkeley's VLM, we're going to talk about that. Berkeley Fast Chat, uh, Hugging Face, and Sense Time, and several. Open source community have been using that. Okay, so how do we translate this uh, theoretical saving into measured speed up? And can we deploy this large language model on edge devices like on our laptops, our phones? Okay, so I'm going to introduce Tiny Chat, which is a lightweight chatbot for large language model on the edge. This is what we designed 3D printed computer, which has a there's an Ori Nano inside, um, and we also have a demo here on the right. So deploying large language model on the edge is quite useful. For example, you run Copilot locally on your edge device, code completion, office, game chat, especially coding. Um, some enterprise data is privacy sensitive. You don't want to upload to the cloud. Um, but these devices are very resource constrained here. It's only a small, uh, less than Ori Nano, resource constrained, low power, and also do not have access to the internet always. So privacy is important. Okay. So here with our tiny tech computer, it can ask you questions uh, and also screw up to see the previous answers. So basically, tiny chat uh, implements this four bit compressed AWQ model. Okay, the weight is 4-bit to save the memory footprint. And here we are doing um, running it on different laptops. This is running the code llama, so writing code using code llama pretty fast. And this is um, comparing MIT Harvard. You use to give it different prompts. Blazing fast. After lab 4, you are going to implement something similar on your laptop. Uh, lab 5, and feel free to continue improving that and pushing to the code base of Tiny Chat Engine's final project, which is open ended, but this could be one of the choices. And the key technique to enable such fast inference is algorithm and system co design. Right? So, on the algorithm side, 4 bit AWQ quantization. On the system side, is the tiny engine technique and parallel computing techniques we introduced. Uh, loop unrolling, blocking, uh, cache locality, right? um, and also multi threading, uh, CUDA programming, uh, different techniques. And also, how do we um, lay out the 4 bit weight in memory and runtime decoded from 4 bit to 16 bit to avoid this decoding overhead? Um, that is also one of the key techniques to make it run fast. And this is comparing. On the 1490 GPU without and with AWQ, how, uh, how, how far, how much speed up we can get. Right? So, the IP16 version is showing both the weight and activation in IP16. So, that's 50 tokens per second running on 1490 GPU. Um, this is the AWQ version. Okay? The weight is only 4 bit, activation is still 16 bit. Um, since this is the memory bottleneck, not the activation. So we keep activation in IP16 uh, to preserve the accuracy. And we run time decode the weight from int, A, int, int 4 to IP16 and do the arithmetic in IP16 since computing is cheap. Memory footprint is expensive. This is exactly the way uh, we did in the efficient inference engine in ISCA uh, 16. Now this method reborn and proved to be quite helpful. 
uh, to accelerate this large language model uh, for real time inference. This one already finished. This one is still slowly making progress. And TinyChat is also flexible, support a lot of different large language models like MPT7B and Mosaic, Falcon 7B, and also Vicuna 7B. It can also run the uh, 13B parameter model on a MacBook, and even on a Jason Orin, which is a, a mobile GPU, mobile GPU, 30 tokens per second running uh, Llama 2.